Royal Private Property Family in true South African style. Let me greet you in our beautiful languages. Melang to our sweet you, our Tuana and our very family. Beauty Molue ni kwa kosa. Riferine if you are Tonga like me. Fear Nandi to our Africans family. To our Zulu fam, we say Sani Bonani. Di Madegwane Abu Udi to our vendor fam. In Isindadele E. Say Nicho Nile. Good evening, everybody. My name is Martha Shingange, and I'm so happy to be guest hosting the 348th episode and the very first holiday edition of the Private Property Podcast. How awesome is that? And of course, happy Heritage Day, family. I hope you have all enjoyed today with great pride celebrating all that makes us uniquely South African. Let's see who is joining us this evening. And I see there is Sandy, Shabika, Stemet, I see Lev, Sherinda, there's Pauline Nankosi, um, I see there's Tracy Miller, um, I see Bongani Kimbi, Mabunda. Please do share what you have been up to today. We would really love to hear from you. And really thank you to all our fans, all of you, over a million of you on Facebook, on Instagram, and YouTube for tuning in every weekday evening at 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. for our great shows. We really hope that you are finding value. Whatever your journey is, as a private, uh, as a property um, investor, whether you're a tenant or a farmer. And of course, on a Friday like this, you can catch the home buyer show with Chad after this podcast a tour of our of gorgeous homes around South Africa. We will, uh, we will start again on Monday, which Chad is coming back again on Mondays, and he'll be followed by Mbali, who comes in on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the farming podcast. And of course, Esther is on Wednesdays with a first-time home buyer's show. So really, whatever your interest, we've got you covered. Personally, I watch all the shows and have learned so much. I just haven't made much progress on the home garden uh, though, but one day is one day. It's going to get there, fam. And just a reminder that our competition is still on. You all know about our awesome, our fantastic competition that we've been running for over a month now, I think. We have, of course, begged the 20,000 comments, but we still need to get to the 10,000 shares. So I really hope that you are still sharing and tagging your family and friends to make the circle even bigger. The details of the competition are on the pinned post on our Facebook page. Don't forget the hashtags that you must use, and that is hashtag 1 million followers, hashtag 20,000 comments, hashtag 10,000 shares. And of course, we'll find out whose weekend plans will be made lit when we announce the winner of the 500 rand cash prize later in the show. The, the cash prize had been rolling over for a few days until Fulu fellow Michelle Hope won 2,500 rand on Wednesday. And I see she is joining uh, us uh, this evening. So well done and congratulations once again, Fulu fellow Michelle Hope. Remember, you have to claim the prize during the show if your name is selected as the winner, because if you don't, then it's going to be a rollover to next week, Monday. So fam, as you enjoy your bride, which I hope you are doing this evening, we are discussing a very interesting topic on the anticipated spike in the rental market. Now, for a landlord or a landlady like me, this is great news to hear that the market has been uh, recovering or it's actually recovery. To talk more about this, I'm joined by Megan Ledbrook, who is the general manager of Only Realty Group. Happy Heritage Day and welcome to the show, Megan. I'm Martha, how are you? I'm great. I'm awesome. Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm great. I had a great Heritage Day. I hope everybody out there did as well. Awesome, awesome. So as we're chatting uh, uh, off, offline, I was saying that you are actually making history this evening as the very first guest of the Private Property Podcast Holiday Show. So yeah, yeah. I'm excited. It's a great honor. I'm so chuffed. Thank you so yeah, much for are. having me. 
Yeah. We are so honored to have you. Thank you so much for taking time on a holiday like this to really talk to us about uh, property, all things property uh, related. No, it's a pleasure. Great. So let's let's get to it, uh, Megan, because you really are a bearer of, of great news this evening and I cannot wait to hear from you. A few months into the COVID-19 lockdown in March, the Reserve Bank um, went on a, I don't want to call it a spree, but they, 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 they reduced the interest rate quite drastically. It was, it, it, the, the interest rate haven't been this low in over 70 years. And that has made it possible for many to be able to afford owning a home. It, it was for a long while a bias market as we have had a few experts uh, um, uh, looking into the situation. So with the impact of the pandemic indicating further uncertainty in the economy, the banks are becoming more stringent in their lending criteria. Like, honestly, it really has been a rather gloomy 18 months. So Megan, what have been some of the challenges that the rental market has gone through during this period? So Martha, the, the, one of the biggest challenges I think for landlords out there has been um, obviously the impact of COVID. Uh, tenants who have been impacted financially, um, some of them have lost their jobs. Um, and besides that, then the tenants who hadn't been impacted, you know, had you know the benefits of being able to actually get into the property market and purchase their own homes because of the interest rate being so low. So landlords were left um, quite quite sort of on the back foot, trying to sort of fight over the best tenants that were left, left in the market. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think just in general, across South Africa, all industries have, have really struggled in the last 18 months. Um, but we're seeing things improve steadily. Um, so it's been quite exciting for us. Yeah, great stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's it's been a challenging time. For me, I mean, I'm a new property investor. I went in uh, just after lockdown, thanks to private property. I've been watching the shows and I was like, wow, this is quite exciting. Let me also just go in. Then I went in and I bought a few properties. And um, it was, it was at first, it was a bit challenging to get tenants uh, because it seemed like a lot of people just couldn't afford, you know, their, their rentals anymore. So, but it, it seems to be getting better. Um, so do you want to share with us in terms of how things are looking? I'm not sure whether I'm just optimistic on my side, but I've noticed that it is getting, there is some kind of improvement. Are you definitely not optimistic? And we've seen such a um, positive upswing. Uh, I think as businesses recover, uh, tenants in general are in better financial positions. Um, you know, landlords are now able to ask for slight increases in their rents, uh, whereas before they've been hanging on and sort of keeping everything at the same level. Um, but there's definitely, definitely been an increase um, in demand from a landlord perspective. Most um, interestingly, in sort of the mid-range uh, price bracket. Um, so we've seen a lot of growth in that area. Um, and I suppose that's where people were probably most hard hit, um, you know, the lower income who were struggling sort of went into house shares, um, mid-market sort of had to sit and stick where they were, and the higher income bracket was normally sort of left a little bit less um, less um, scathed, if that's the right way to put it, um, for COVID. But, yeah, so, I mean, we're seeing um, such a healthy, healthy demand for, for rentals in the sort of seven to 10,000 rand price bracket. Um, they give better yields um, for the landlord. So, yeah, it's been good. And, and especially in areas that we've seen, uh, East and West Rand in Johannesburg have been really positive, uh, Joburg North, so the northern suburbs. But also, um, you know, don't forget about places like PE. You know, PE is um, really a good place to invest at the moment if, you, if you're looking for something where you're going to be able to find a good return on your investment. Uh, Dolphin Coast, so, um, you know, Belito, um, Sharkers Rock, um, Amschlange and Northwoods. And then um, interesting in Cape Town is it's more the northern suburbs that we're seeing quite a lot of growth um, as opposed to, you know, CBD has always been the, 
a magic area, um, but they've been really struggling. And um, so, yeah, so it's been interesting. Oh, quite interesting insight. Uh, PE, I never thought of it. We know that Cape Town is always, you know, struggling because the rentals are quite high and the margins, most of the time, they tend to be on the, on the, on the downside. But it really yeah. is quite uh, uh, encouraging to hear that we, it's not all doom and gloom and that things oh, are starting oh. to pick up. So as landlords, uh, we'll be having those conversations with our tenants, asking for a little bit more but obviously still keeping it quite um, on the, on the con converse, con conservative because I don't think we're really out of the woods as yet. No, not at all. Um, I must say, though, um, if, you, if you check the tenants and good standing sort of um, stats from TPN, that's quite interesting. We're now sitting at just over 80% um, for the same period this year, 2021, um, versus last year where it was 73%. So, you know, th those are very encouraging numbers. You can definitely see that quarter two of 2020, which is obviously when hard lockdown was, versus 2021, seen a big improvement. Oh, that is absolutely awesome. So really this now is saying to us and confirming that rental property investment is still a pretty good idea it, it, well you know the pro property is i suppose one of those things as i said to you earlier when we were um, offline it's it's there's there's never a better time to invest than now so you know if you if you're keen on getting involved you know jump in and just make sure you do your research in terms of areas if you're going to be a landlord what sort of um, your, your competition will be like out there would you know be very very selective about which spaces you invest in um, but yeah it's, it's always a good time yeah that is that is great i mean as we always say in the show location 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 and of course run those numbers before you jump in but 100%. really i think the message is now is it's, it's a good time it's a good time to to be investing in rental property so during as you as you as you opened um uh, earlier on you know opening remarks and and your earlier comments we were talking about um the challenges of covid-19 um the impact that they've had on the consumer and they've really gone through a lot and some are still going through some of the ch um, going through challenges what is the environment like among good standing tenants um, uh, especially because that's where the magic is so those are the people that we're actually looking for um, are they downscaling what are their plans what 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 is happening uh, with with our tenants so um i mean uh, it's it's really actually quite interesting so we're seeing a lot of people that are opting to rent instead of opting to buy um, which i found very very interesting. Obviously, you know, we always have in, in our minds that if you're going to um, sort of going to grow up and property ownership is the next step. But we're seeing a lot of um, tenants, tenants in good standing who, you know, have the the means and the ability to buy that are choosing to rent. Um, so a lot of them are renting uh, bigger properties, uh, which they might not be able to afford if they were getting a bond, but, you know, the rental makes it affordable for them. Um, and also because people are spending more time at home, those tenants who, who you know, sort of the sweet spots are also looking to have a better quality of life. So we're seeing a, a lot of people opting to rent um, properties that they might not necessarily be able to afford themselves. So that's been very interesting. And then on the flip side, we're seeing a huge increase in the trend of those tenants in good standing deciding to share with friends. So house sharing is, is becoming a big um, big market, which is, I suppose, um, great from a from a landlord perspective because you have two two good tenants instead of one. Um, but yeah, so you know, seeing um, single. Um, single people sharing with other single people uh, and it just gives them sort of a better quality of life. So instead of, you know, maybe a one bedroom flat, they can rent a house or a pool and pool their resources and just, yeah, have, have something that's a little bit more enjoyable for their lifestyle. Wow. Interesting developments. And I mm. suppose now with, 
more people being able to work from home. People can actually live anyway. Uh, I've read somewhere that there are also people who are now opting for the coast. Um, I mean, I love the beach. If it was possible for me to re mm. just relocate uh, to the coast, that would be awesome. I mean, I suppose um, rent renting in the in in that regard might make it more financially uh, um, viable, in, 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 rather than uh, having to buy the property. And we know that most of them they they don't come cheap, eh? By the country. that's true. It's a bit he hefty. Uh, it is. It's a. It's yeah. It is a lot. Um, but you know, I, th I think that you raised the the perfect point there. You know, there's been such a huge influx of people from um, inland areas moving to coastal areas. So that's also definitely uh, generated a lot of interest in rentals um, in those spaces. Uh, it's difficult to relocate to a new town um, and sort of jump in and buy a house straight away. So most people are renting, sort of checking the areas out, seeing um, what works for them, what works for their families. So that's had a huge impact on rentals of the coastal towns. Interesting times indeed. Now, Megan, we need to go for a quick uh, break to announce the lucky winner of the 500 rands from our competition. And of course, the winner on this Heritage Day, as selected by our random picker is, let's wait for it. And the winner is Alfred Kuali. Congratulations, Alfred. Let us know if you are watching the show in the comment section to claim your prize. Remember, you have to do this whilst the show is live because if you don't, then the prize money is rolling over to Monday. Congratulations and enjoy your prize. We are making more winners every single day. So remember to comment, you tag your friends, you share. Um, the post on, on our Facebook page to stand a chance of winning, just like all the other winners that we have had for over a month now. So, Megan, as we wrap up the show, and I mean, this has been quite an insightful uh, discussion, I want us to now look at uh, two things. Um, firstly, we spoke about good, uh, um, good standing tenants that they, they, they are the stats are quite improving. They are picking up. Things are looking up. It's, it's all great. So how do we as landlords, because that is quite important, keep them, particularly during these um, times where the competition is quite high in, in, in the market? Uh, it's probably a renter's market. You know, they have more choices. Uh, there's more um, uh, um, things you know, on offer by different landlords what can we do to to make us stand out so i mean that that's not just different landlords i mean there's so much development going on at the moment that you know there's competition from new properties as well um, and you know they always seem to have all the bells and whistles and you know, sometimes i know landlords get a little bit um, despondent and think you know how are we going to compete but um ultimately tenants are people um Mm -hmm. And it comes down to relationships. So my biggest tip for keeping keeping and attracting a tenant is to make sure that you know everyone goes into the arrangement with the same sort of goal, which is to make sure that your tenant's happy and the landlord's happy. So biggest tip there is make sure that the property is actually uh, in good condition um, and priced right, which is fair to the tenant and fair to you. So you you immediately going to attract more interest on your property if it's something that looks like you've cared about it because then the tenant's going to feel like, you know, while, whilst they're living there, you're going to be a good landlord. So definitely um, make sure that you look after your property and communicate with the tenants. Um, so as soon as you get inquiries, if you're listing it yourself, respond immediately and make sure that you get back to those, those people because those tenants are looking at 10, 20, 30 other properties. So if it takes you two or three days to get back to them, then they might have already found something else. Mm -hmm. So you have to be quite quite on the ball. And 
Yeah, and I think, you know, that that's the biggest thing to sort of try and find the tenants. And then once you've got them, um, the trick is to keep them. Um, and that, you know, is, is obviously also down to, to relationships. So, you know, if you're using um, a rental agent to manage it, make sure that they, uh, on top of everything, they're reacting to complaints from the clients and they're making sure that you are notified when there's something that needs to be done. Um, and also just keep those lines of communication open. So, you know, if the tenant, um, you know, does run into some sort of problem, you know, they can chat to you and, and vice versa, you know, if you're needing access to something. So, yeah. So I, I think it's really about the unique uh, value proposition that will now distinguish you from the rest. Like you're saying, now we're not just only competing amongst uh, landlords, but there's also the developers. I mean, I've seen quite a few of them. They're no longer only selling their developments. They're also renting them, which is just making things a bit challenging, you know, and quite exciting uh, for yeah. the market. So really, um, basics, um, your communication, that is quite a big thing. Your pricing, that's also quite another big thing. We've got one of our fans, Howard Mulekezan, who, uh, who always says that, you know, just 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 go a little bit lower. You know, that's his trick. Yeah. He just says that you know, you look you look at the market, look where the market is, and try to beat that. And we can only beat that by going down just a little bit lower because everyone is, um, in terms of the tenants, they are just looking for that prop property that um, has all the nice things, the bells and the whistles. Exactly. But at what price is it coming in? So price competitiveness has really just become a big thing. It really is. It really is. And if you if you feel like you can't compete on on the rental price, then you know maybe look at some extra things that you can throw in. Maybe you can throw in um, free fiber or um, you know water and electricity or just something that will just sort of smooth the, the make the transition a little bit easier for the tenants. Yeah. So you've got to be creative. Uh, just yeah. always be looking at. What else? What else can you do? What else can you change? What else can you improve? So constantly uh, just reinventing your, 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 your offerings, really. But I think what is also quite coming up strongly is that human touch. You know, people, yeah. um, you know, tenants are people at the end of the day. And how we make them feel counts more than sometimes, you know, the money doesn't make up for it. But what, how, they, how we make them feel, how we treat them. How we exactly. relate to them, you know, it makes a whole lot of a difference. It does, and you know, if you if you take the view that, I mean, these the, these great tenants are, I mean, there's so many of them, and it's wonderful to work with a tenant who's um, sort of takes care of the property and treats it like it's their own. But there's not, you know, a never-ending supply of them. So when you've got one, you know, you really need to appreciate them. You really need to uh, realize that it is a it is a blessing that you've got this person yeah. and, and a blessing for them that they've got the property so you know yeah I agree with you the human touch is something that you can't actually put a value on no it truly is I'm loving a comment here from uh, Jen Zipiwa Pesi Smith uh, saying a fellow property guru Freedom Mbuli exactly what we were talking about the other day indulge yourself I just love the fact that you know um, this shows they just bring in so many insights that um, discussions that we are having uh, with our fellow property uh, investors, you know, and it all just comes in together. And when we come to these platforms, uh, a lot of things are confirmed. We learn quite a lot of things. So it's quite empowering, you know, to be part of these shows every single weekday at 7 p.m. We've got different experts like yourself, Megan, coming in to talk to us about how we can really um, uh, strive, be successful in our property investment journey. So we really appreciate that you always um, take the time to come talk to us uh, so that we grow. We really appreciate this. And I mean, all of this is for free. So well done to private property. We really, really appreciate this. And uh, making a last one from, from, from me, what does the future look like for the rental market? What can we look forward going into the next year, into the next uh, few months, um, what's in store? So I think <laughs> I hate questions like this because 
<laughs> you put something down <laughs> and then something something happens and everything gets thrown True. out the window. Um no, I, I think I think the rental marking market's in, in for a little bit of a boom. Um, you know, and I think across um, all price ranges. So from the the sort of entry level prices, I think you're gonna see quite a, a big spike in, in properties where people are, you know, doing um micro living and um, sort of that shared, you know, shared uh, communal areas and the smaller rooms that they're renting, I think we're going to see a, a, a huge increase in that. Um, but then all the way up to to sort of um, more expensive properties, family homes, uh, I think we're going to see people that are keen to move and keen to sort of spread their, their wings a little bit, uh, try different areas, you know, they're going to be renting. And yeah, I think we we're in for exciting times. You know, I wanted to congratulate you on taking the plunge um, after COVID and buying property. Most people were sort of panicking and selling, and you know, you you did the opposite. So I think that's quite brave. But I, I think you know, landlords are hopefully in for a really positive time. Yeah, absolutely. We must always find that silver lining in everything. You know, uh, in a disaster or in a, ch- in a challenging time, we must find opportunities. And I think that's what property investment is about, you know, finding opportunities. So yeah. really, it's quite exciting. And the insights that you have shared are really helping us to think about what next, you know, uh, insights like this, they help us in making our property investment decisions uh, because the whole point is for us to grow. So this is really, really helpful. And Megan, I honestly feel optimistic about the future of our rental investments. Thank you so much for the insights that you have shared with us. We appreciate that. That was that a pleasure. Join us. Yeah, you could join oh, no, us. That was a pleasure. Yeah, on a, on a Heritage Day. Uh, so yeah, we are, one, we are some of the few people who are, wa- who are waking this evening when a whole lot of other people are really just taking it easy this evening. So we really, really... Uh, appreciate that and wish you a fantastic weekend further thank you so much same to you thank you so much for having me and i just want to congratulate alfred and hopefully he spends the money well over the weekend so oh yes yes i'm just gonna look check now to see if he has claimed the prize because he needs to comment and tell us that he is watching so that we can give him the money because otherwise it's just gonna roll over to monday but thank you so much it's a pleasure. Have a great Thanks, Martha. Same to you. Thank you. Great stuff. So let me just look at the comments now. All right. It doesn't look like Alfred is here. Um, It's a rollover. It's definitely a rollover, fam. So on that note, it's time to call it a week. Thank you so much for keeping me company this evening and for your lively engagement as always. Remember your 7 p.m. weekday appointment with Zama on Monday. It's going, it's going to be a great one. So for now, let's go shopping with Chad on the Home Buyers Show up next at 8 p.m. So fam, really have a fantastic weekend further. Sending you lots of green hearts. Until next time, good night. Mithlai Seka and stay safe.